morning family and friends from our family to you thank you for opening up your home once again this morning on such a beautiful sunday today pastor patrick will conclude on our foundation series making disciples and that none should perish well i hope you've brought your bibles and your notepads along as pastor patrick on this last session or sermon of his today that he'll be connecting the dots of discipleship and just bringing so much detail to uh, discipleship and what it's all about so i hope you are ready because i am looking forward to this message here's pastor patrick with his message Good morning, Ecclesia community. It's been a privilege for me to connect with you in this fashion again after three weeks of silence. And I just want to commend uh, our men as well as our ladies who did an exceptional job with the panel discussions or the group work. So uh, we continue with a brand new series. It's called the Foundation Series. But before I want to establish that, I just quickly want to build a bridge for this session from where we were and where we are heading. Now, before we start and do anything else, let's bow our heads and, and ask God to bless this uh, recording in Jesus' name. Okay, let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for an amazing time of uh, rest, but also an amazing time of reflection. We also want to thank you for the series, the importance as well as the urgency of the series. Thank you, Lord, that it's about you and your kingdom and uh, we don't have to worry about anything because you are in control in the midst of everything surrounding us we don't have to look to our left or even to our right we just need to keep our eyes fixed on you jesus the author the finisher and the perfecter of our faith thank you that we have your word in our midst that comforts us but also thank you that we have the holy spirit in our midst who is god in person here with us we actually is the one conducting the service or conducting this teaching but uh, most of all we are grateful for the for the presence uh, of you holy spirit and we just want to ask you to continue and mold and shape the word that you have laid on my heart we pray this in jesus name with thanksgiving in our hearts amen okie dokie so if you guys are ready uh, let's dig in i quickly want to do a recap as i said in the disciple series that we started off with the last one we did that none should perish and i'm going to try to do both of them together the thing that i don't want you guys to forget is that discipleship is intentional but it's also relational what i mean with intentional is we have to move people towards god and what i mean with relationship is that we as christians or bible believing uh, followers of Christ, we need to reach out to others with this common purpose, and that is to share, share Christ with them. But what is our ultimate purpose? What is the what? What should we do and where should we do it? Uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, it says that we were called to make disciples of all nations. And if we look at the why or what are we passionate about, what's the motive behind it? It should be the love that we have for God as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and also the love that we have for others. But before we can do that, you yourself need to love you. You need to be secure in your identity. You need to know that you have authority and that you have the power of the Holy Spirit. So our greatest motivation and passion is the love that we have for God. You know, I was thinking about Paul and Paul said Christ's love compels him to do what he is doing at the moment. And I'm asking myself the question, what's the biggest motivation for me to do what I'm doing? If that's not the love that God has for me, how will I exchange that same love in a way that other people can see how much God has loved me? So it is his love for me and my love for him and my love for others that at the end of the day will be my motivation. But out of this births a process and it starts off where you invite people into your space. It's literally in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus demonstrated that to us where he invited two disciples of John and he basically just told them, come and see. 
come and hang out with me. Come and get a, a taste of who I am. Come and sit at my table, talk to me, interact. Uh, and as we interact, you will get an opportunity to get to know me better. Later on, in that same chapter, he, 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 he left them with an invitation stating, now you come and follow me. And you will see that the first one was very basic. There was, it wasn't a high level challenge, but the second one in follow me, you have to think about that. So as he asked him to follow him, uh, Andrew got so excited that he couldn't keep it for himself and he had to go tell his brother. And that's the thing that I want, that people, as they meet Jesus for the first time, they must have this excitement. And even if you know Jesus for five years, 10 years, 20 years, or maybe even 40 years, you still have to have that same flame to go out there and share Jesus with other people. So after he said, follow me, it meant literally walk behind me, see what I'm doing, but just follow me, just hang close to me as we're not just fellowshipping around the table, but as we move from this point to the next point. The third part in the stage is where Jesus in Matthew chapter four told the disciples, come now and I'll make you fishers of men. It's a bit more intentional because sometimes we wanna follow Jesus for the benefits that comes with it, but we don't wanna lay down our lives. Because when he said, come and I will make you fishers of men, there was a direct and a clear indication that he wanted to do something in us, but he also wanted to do something through us. He want us to go out there and catch a new catch. Instead of Peter and John and the other brothers that were fishermen, now they are fishers of men. And we have the same challenge today. The question that I'm asking you, are you in the process of journeying with someone? Are you in the process of sharing Christ with somebody else? Are you in the process of fishing men for Jesus? And then the last stage in this process is where we have to go and we have to bear fruit. In uh, John chapter 15, verse 16, he says, I have chosen you and I have called you and I've called you to go and bear much fruit, fruit that will last. Too often in the church, we don't have fruit that will last. We have fruit in the beginning, or sometimes we have fruit that doesn't last for a very long time. And the only way that it can actually last is when you come to a point and you realize that the final product should be, I need to invest enough time, energy, and resources in somebody that at the end of the day, he will be able to make disciples, which means that I need to make a disciple who is able to make another disciple. In other words, it means I have to journey with this person. I need to give him adequate time, energy, everything that he needs to equip him well enough so that he would be in a position to journey with somebody else. In 2 Timothy 2, 2, there's that principle where uh, Paul told Timothy, the things which you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. So you can see there's a four phase process that we have to undertake. Now, when should we do it? And if we go to the Great Commission, it says, now go and make disciples of all nations. And the quick answer would be, as we go, in other words, every single day when I open my eyes, as I start off my day and I'm connected with people, I have the potential to reach out to someone. I have the potential to journey with somebody. It means it's an everyday activity that you engage with people with these crucial questions. Where do you find yourself? What are you gonna do with the message of eternity? What are you gonna do with Jesus? And when you find Jesus, how are you gonna grow in him so that you will be in a position to share Christ with other people? Every day you have a sphere of influence and you are the one that needs to reach out to others. John Lewis, he asked me this with, with very urgency. And when I say he asked me this, it's just something that I read, but I took it very personal. He says, if not now, when do you want to do it? And that question I want to pose to you as well. If not now, when do you want to do it? If not you, who are supposed to do it? So as follower of Christ, both you and I have the responsibility, seeing the urgency to respond immediately. Now, that is, you see, it starts off with a purpose, it goes on to passion, there's a process that we need to follow, and then right at the end, there's a product. But I want us to go to the Bible to see how this thing unfold and see if we can untap it a little bit. So let's look or have a re-look in the journey of Jesus with the disciples. Now, we all know Jesus called his uh, disciples the 12 
Later on, they grew to 70, 72. In the upper room, they were about 120, and it just grew from there. Now, what I want to say is, let's quickly go back to Matthew chapter uh, 10 as well as Luke chapter 10. In Matthew chapter 10, we read that he sent out the 12 dis disciples in pairs and he gave them authority and power with an assignment. And in Luke chapter 10, he did the exact same thing. Also in pairs, he gave them authority and power and he gave them an assignment. The assignment was, you go out and when you find someone with an unclean spirit that needs deliverance, you pray for that person and he will be delivered. Secondly, if you find people that are sick, you pray for the sick and they will be healed. And thirdly, this is what you need to proclaim, that the kingdom of God is at hand and you need to repent. So in both instances, we see it. They will then come back and they will report of how awesome it was, even for demons or evil spirits that responded to the authority and the power that they had. And then Jesus said, don't get excited about that, but what you need to be most excited for is the fact that your name is written in the book of life. Another thing that I picked up, especially in Matthew chapter 10, was in the 28th uh, verse where he says, do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell, which means we need to have a reverence for God. We need to have uh, the fear of the Lord as we know it, because sometimes we, we look at men and we are scared of men and we don't want to reach out to people, or we're just scared for people, how they're going to respond and what they're going to say. We have the mandate to go out there. We have the authority. We have the power to make a difference in this world. And guess what? Every day you go to work, every day you go to school, every day you hang out with friends, you might be in a cycling club or maybe even a fishing club. It doesn't matter where you find, but there's people. The question that I'm asking you is, do each and every one of them know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? If the answer is no, you got work to do. You need to establish a relationship so that you can because you can, you have the mandate, you have the authority, and you have the power to share Christ with other people. Another key thing that I want you to remember, as Jesus with the disciples were moving from village to village and from town to town, at some point they reached the, the city called uh, Philippi in Caesarea. And uh, Jesus asked a basic question, who do the people say I am? They gave him some answers. Some say you're Elijah, some say you're John the Baptist or just a prophet. And then he turned around to, to his own disciples and he asked them, now who do you say I am? It's a great question. Maybe we should pause now for a while and just let that same question sink in and you answer it for yourself. Who do you say I am? At that moment, Peter got a revelation from the Father and he gave an answer and he said, you are the Messiah, you are the Son of God, you are the Christ, you are the one that we're waiting for. And Jesus suddenly realized no man could have given Peter this revelation. It is only his father. And based on that revelation, Jesus said, on this rock, I will build, on this revelation, I will build my church. Here's the key thing. We know church in the Bible as a gathering, but in this instance, God has referred to the church as the called out ones. The Greek word is called Ecclesia and our community's name is Ecclesia which means that we have a responsibility as the called out ones to go out there and make a difference in our community, in our town, in our region, in our nation, and even in our continent. We cannot be stagnant. We cannot just keep this message to ourselves. And that's why I believe we were called to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Now, saying that, we need to understand that the word Ecclesia means it's a new uh, governmental system. In other words, you need to go with the authority, the purpose, the mandate, and the power that you have into your sphere of influence with a peaceful mandate to go and change. It's not the other way around. We don't come with force because God said in His Word, not by power, not by might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. It's only with the Spirit of God that we will be able to bring the chains so desperately needed, not just in our nation, not just in our region, not just in our town, but even in our own household. So I want us to remember that Jesus said, I give you the keys. And when you have the keys of heaven, you have a greater authority. You have access 
to heaven and you have access on earth to open and to close what needs to be open and what needs to be closed. We cannot let the mandate that God has given us be put on a shelf so that you and I can feel good about our, the fact that we are Christians and followers of Christ and we just wait for the end. We can't wait for the end. There's many people dying without Christ and you and I have the responsibility to go share with them. In Matthew 28, I already mentioned that he gave us a clear purpose when he said, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And then there comes a great promise that he will be with us every step of the way. Isn't that amazing? In Acts chapter 1, he says, now I want you to go and wait. And after he ascended, they went back to Jerusalem and they waited. And as they wait, they waited in prayer, in union, in fellowship. There was a oneness. And as they wait, the Holy Spirit came. And we all know that when the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, it was, it was, it was, it wasn't subtle. It wasn't everybody. There was a, um, there was a commotion. Everybody knew that something happened. Each one heard the gospel message in his own language and they could respond. And after everybody was kind of disillusioned and didn't know what was going on, uh, Peter stood up and said, listen, let me explain it to you. At some point, they were even accused that they were under the influence of alcohol, uh, uh, intoxicated. And Peter said, no, 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 it's way too early for that to happen. Let me explain. And, and he gave a brilliant sermon. You guys can go and read it in Acts chapter 2. But you know what happened? That right at the end of the gospel message, after he shared it with them, there was something that happened. And I believe it's a direct result based on what the Holy Spirit has done at that moment because the Holy Spirit started to, it, it's called, they were cut to the heart or they were pierced to the heart. It was a deep conviction that came over people that they realized that they are sinners and they need a savior. And this Jesus whom they crucified is actually the Savior. And that was the basic message that Peter said. What do we need to do when they ask? Peter said, repent each one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you know, God will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. We all know they responded because there was about 3,000 of them that responded. And I know we, I'm getting excited as I'm telling this, but I want to I wanna come in with a landing because next week we're going to continue with this because we want to establish foundations. But listen what happened. I'm just going to give you a teaser, just something light for you to, to, to nibble on for the week as you digest the rest that I've told you. So those who had received the word and who were baptized, who became part of it was about 3,000. Now, verse 42 of Acts chapter 2 says the following. They were continually devoted, which means they were dedicated. It's like they had a love, they had a passion, they had a loyalty, they had an enthusiasm for the next things. They, 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 had, a, um, they had an appetite, they, they had a, um, a, a deep devotion to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, the breaking of the bread, and to prayer. We're going to elaborate a little bit more on that. But the point that I want to leave with you at this moment, they had a devotion. The question I'm asking you, do you have the same devotion which the 3,000 disciples had? If you don't have that devotion, you have to ask yourself the question, what happened to it? Because in Revelation, in the book, uh, uh, the, the second chapter, when he s spoke about the church in Ephesus, he had a very clear, um, how should I put it, something that he didn't like, and that was they left their first love. Did you leave your first love? Or are you still in love with Jesus like the first day you met him? Because I want to tell you, if you don't love him like that, something is wrong. You will become lukewarm, and when you're lukewarm, he will just put you out. Where's the devotion? Because sometimes we're devoted to a lot of things. We're devoted to television. We're devoted to games. We're devoted to sport. We're devoted to fishing. We're devoted to 
family, we're devoted to our spouses, we're devoted to a lot of things to the exception of being devoted to Christ. And if we're not devoted to Him and to the Holy Spirit and a loving Father, how will your devotion look like to everyone else that you need to share Christ with? It's a deep question because devotion is so important. That's where we get the word every morning. We start off our day with devotions, with Bible reading and prayer and all of those things. But unless the Holy Spirit bathes it, soaks it, it will just be another ritual that we need to tick off and comfort ourselves with. God doesn't like casual Christianity. He wants sold out Christians that stands in a relationship with Him so that we can have access to a loving Father. And when we, in, when, we, when we enjoy that, He wants us to share it with others that they will also be able to enjoy. So for this week, friends, you and your spouse, you and your family, if you are alone, if you're single, if you're a single mom with your kids, I want you to ask this question. Do you know Jesus? And if you know Him, are you sharing Jesus with other people? If not, I think the time has come for us not to sit back anymore, but to get out and be part of this. Because I want to tell you, Jesus is coming back. I don't know when, I don't know when, but He's coming back. And He's coming back for a pure bride. A pure bride. So let's step up and let's move into a direction where we know Christ is pleased with us. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. Thank you that it's yes and amen. Thank you that no one, no one can snatch us out of your hand, even the hand of the Father. We have great assurance that those that are in Christ Jesus, we are safe and we are secure. But thank you that death is not supposed to keep us in bondage. That's actually not supposed to keep us passive, but it needs to make us active to a point where we cannot sleep because there are others that doesn't know Jesus yet. I pray, Lord, as we try to establish these foundations needed in our Christian walk, that we will stand solid on your word and in prayer and in fellowship, and that we will serve others with the resources that you had given us. So I bless you, Father God. I bless everyone that is listening to this. And I pray, Lord, that through the Spirit of God, that you will activate every single one of us as we go out on a Monday that we will share Jesus with others. I pray this in Jesus' name with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. God bless until we meet again. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Patrick, for such a beautiful word. Now, just a quick note from myself and, you know, Linwell that um, discipleship, you know, we've started a couple of weeks ago, we started playing PlayStation. I mean, I enjoy playing PlayStation, especially FIFA. And we've just used this, this, this simple tool to connect with other young men, making disciples. We play a couple of games and we just have fun and we share our testimony, we pray with a few young men, and we just share with them this model that we've been listening to regarding discipleship. I hope that this message and this entire series has brought so much clarity to you on the ways and means of making disciples. I hope that this, this entire series has brought growth, but even development to your personal life and even to your own family. I mean, if you look at uh, the, the interviews that we've had, with the men and women and how the, the, what they've shared with, uh, from their own journey and their own testimony of how discipleship has impacted their lives, but even the perspective in their own minds. Thank you so much for journeying with us. We appreciate your support. We thank you for supporting us on and following us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and even on our YouTube channel. For those of you who have not followed us on YouTube yet, follow us on YouTube because this message that of Pastor Patrick will break it down in the weeks to follow and we'll add some more nuggets, gold nuggets and more extras to this message that will bring clarity to you. Thank you for so many of you that have been calling, emailing, texting and just sharing with us how much this foundation has changed your life. We thank you and may you have a blessed Sunday and week ahead and we are praying for you and your family. Thank you. Thank you.